Hello, and welcome to Capital Compass. We are the official podcast of the New York State Catholic Conference. I'm your host, Jillian. Today, in episode 16, I'll be chatting with Monsignor Kevin Sullivan, Executive Director of Catholic Charities for the Archdiocese of New York, about his recent trip visiting Ukrainian refugees. Throughout the 2022 legislative session, we are giving you updates on what is happening in Albany. Without further ado, here is your Legislative Minute. Welcome to the Legislative Minute. I'm here with Dennis Paust, Executive Director of the New York State Catholic Conference. Today, recording the Legislative Minute, it is May 10th, 2022. Dennis, can you tell us what's been happening in Albany recently? Hi, Jillian. Yeah, well, the legislative session has taken a a real turn since we last spoke. Uh, As you know, with the leak of the uh, draft Supreme Court opinion uh, that may pretend the uh, overturning of Roe v. Wade, um, state legislators uh, and the governor and the attorney general have been basically falling all over themselves to try and to uh, be more pro-abortion than the next. And as we record this today, um, the governor has just announced uh, a new fund that she's declaring $35 million uh, to supposedly improve access to abortion, Um, basically uh, trying to expand the capacity of abortion clinics in New York to take even more unborn lives, to invite women from out of state to come to end their pregnancies here. It's a horrible misuse of public funds. She has support from the legislature on this, unfortunately. She has support from the attorney general. Uh, uh, Unfortunately, no one's asking the basic questions like, is it legal for a governor to unilaterally take $35 million in taxpayer funds and direct it to abortion clinics? Um, It's a somber time uh, in the state because we expect in the next two weeks that there will be a lot of pro-abortion expansion legislation passing. This is the most pro-abortion state in the nation, and they've basically done all they can, but they're trying to always do more. No abortion, no, there is never too many abortions for politicians in New York. So it's a sad update today, um, but we are vigorously opposing all of this. And I know you always uh, tell people to go to our website. Please, uh, listeners, do that. Take action. Tell Governor Hochul you reject this. Tell lawmakers, you reject this expansion of abortion in New York and to pray for a culture of life. And that was your Legislative Minute. We'll be right back after a brief message. Are you interested in staying up to date with New York State legislation pertinent to the Catholic Church? Do you want your Catholic voice to be heard? Sign up for the Catholic Action Network by going to our website at nyscatholic.org slash action dash center or texting can to 50457. Again, CAN, C-A-N, to 50457. And we're back. Today, we are joined by Monsignor Kevin Sullivan. He's been the Executive Director of Catholic Charities of the Archdiocese of New York since 2001. And recently, he made a trip overseas to visit Ukrainian refugees with Cardinal Dolan and an Archdiocese of New York delegation. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Jillian. I'm delighted to be with you. Um, So I guess to start off, how did this trip uh, come to be? Well, um, in this big world that we live in, um, there is an organization called Catholic Near East Welfare Association, of which Cardinal Dolgan is the chairman of the board, that since the Second World War has been an interest of the Pope in making sure that there's concern for Eastern Catholics. We oftentimes think of the Catholic Church as being Western, and it is in in the United States. But there are millions of Catholics in the Eastern uh, Europe and other places. uh, And this organization, CONIWA, Catholic Near East Welfare Association, is basically um, the Pope's expressing concern to make sure that those churches are not forgotten. And so that was the auspices 
of this trip. And Cardinal Dolan asked me if I would uh, go with him on this trip. So that's how it kind of began. So you guys went to Poland, uh, Slovakia, and a little bit of Ukraine, correct? Correct. Uh, so what was, uh, I guess, like, I know you went to three different places, but how are people's spirits over there? Well, a lot of what, you know, we read in the media was confirmed, okay? And then, though, there was a little bit of nuances and some additional stuff, which I also learned. So maybe to give... Uh, those who are listening, a sense of, of this, you know, both Poland and the Ukraine are about 40 million people, okay? You, Poland's a little bigger, Ukraine's a little bit less. But here's the tragedy of this war, that of the maybe 39, 40 million people in Ukraine, 12 million or so have been displaced. So that's over 25% of the entire population that has been displaced. Now, 5 million of them, more than 5 million, were displaced across the borders. So they're actually refugees in Poland, Ukraine, Slovakia, Romania. And another 7 million are displaced, but from primarily the eastern part of Ukraine, to the western part. So what we found is a lot of people not in their homes, people who were displaced. Now we saw them for the most part in the um, in Poland and Slovakia. And so we we interacted with refugees in both Poland and Slovakia. So I feel like um, when you think of the word refugee, you think of like a lot of refugee camps. Um, where were these people staying? And like, what was the, I guess, the atmosphere like? So, so Jillian, here's, here's what was, has been reported in the media and what we confirmed by our visit. To speak negatively, we did not see a single refugee camp. So our notion of refugees when we, maybe think of different places in the Middle East or in other parts of the world is like masses of people, thousands in one place, et cetera. No, no. These refugees who are definitely refugees have been welcomed into parishes, into people's homes. And so they are being cared for in a very neighborly, family-like way. And it was really inspiring to see the openness and the welcomingness of, you know, many church groups, many parishes, individual parishes saying, please, we're going to welcome you in here. So we basically saw neighbors welcoming neighbors. You know, maybe I shouldn't say this, but these refugees, when we saw them, had enough food because people were sharing what they had. They were clothed because, you know, if they needed clothes, there were clothes that they 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 had. Um, so it was a very kind of inspiring thing, even though we knew how awful it was that millions were driven from their home. I think uh, through this devastation, it's kind of shown us uh, or reminded us of the need for community and the importance of community. I think you're absolutely right. And again, uh, you know, I can talk in a little bit more depth about some of the reasons for this, but your your overall point is is exactly on target. Did you, uh, I'm sure you heard a lot of stories from people. So did any really like stand out and can, you know, can you give our listeners a little tidbit? Sure. Um, and again, one of the things which, which is uh, an overall theme that I kind of have developed is I know what we didn't see. Okay. And what we didn't see is parts of the Ukraine in which there was the utter devastation of war, destroyed buildings, destroyed homes. And we didn't see 
what I have to imagine is the more desperate situation of refugee or uh, sorry, people within the Ukraine who are desperate because their houses, their homes have been destroyed. So we didn't see that. But let me share with you one story at all in Lviv, a very westernmost city in Ukraine. I met this young woman, probably in her 20s, who was a law student from eastern Ukraine. The reason she came to Lviv was because her own house became barracks for Russian troops. They took over our house and they, they just had to get out. And so now she is in a very welcoming um, senior citizen home, which has opened its doors, run by the Catholic Church in Lviv. And that's where she's been living for, I believe, the past month or so. So that was one story. The other story um, was a family, a mom, three kids, um, and she kind of gave testimony to being driven out from their city. She was in Slovakia. We were in Kosice in Slovakia. And a very moving story about how they couldn't stay, they were driven out, but that her husband, because the men have staying in their fighting, um, how did she know? Was she ever going to see her husband again? Didn't didn't uh, know that. The other end, but she she spoke in um, in Ukrainian, but at the end she spoke in English, and she said, "Thank you for coming." And no, we are Ukrainians. We will win. It was just such a moving kind of ending to her testimony of fleeing, being thrown out, et cetera. And to talk about resilience, her daughter was 22. Her daughter has already gotten a job, I believe, as a computer programmer in, the, uh, in, uh, in Slovakia. That's amazing. Yep. I guess I probably should have asked you this earlier, but what were the main purposes of like going on this trip? Very simple. Very simple. Um, it was solidarity. It was, in other words, to say to this devastated uh, peoples, 25, 30% of whom are not in their homes because of this unjust, aggressive Russian war that you're not forgotten. That we're here because, I don't mean to say that nobody else cares, but we are concerned. The world is watching. And because Cardinal Dolan went to bring a even more poignant spotlight to say there are human beings who are impacted. So the show was the, 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 the reason was to show our solidarity, our awareness to those who are suffering. But secondly, to say thanks to the workers from Caritas, Catholic East Services, Catholic Near East Welfare Association, the Knights of Columbus, the Knights of Malta, the workers of the church, uh, the aid to the church in need, to say to them, thank you for your dedication, your sacrifice in meeting the needs of their. So it was, um, it was a, it was a mission of humanitarian and spiritual solidarity, where we have to affirm the dignity of the human person and the ability and the common uh, sisterhood, brotherhood of all of us. And that was that was the purpose of the mission. I really want to highlight on you saying solidarity because I think it's really important. You know, I think the Catholic Church sometimes is unjustly criticized for saying things, but at the same time, we also walk the walk. We go in and we help others in other countries and we visit these places um, 
where people need help. And um, yeah. it's just, it's, I think it's a very important thing to point out. Well, Jillian, let me add something to that. Um, I, what our experience was, and from what we were told, is that spontaneously, when the war began, I believe it was February 24th, spontaneously, priests, parishioners, groups of churches, of parishes, immediately went to the border and set up welcoming tents, etc. And spontaneously, they welcomed people who were coming. It flowed from their Christian faith that you have to reach out to people in need. It took some of the more bureaucratic government agencies three weeks to begin to get their things in shape. Thanks be to God for the spontaneous response of these, of, of the parishes, the clergy, the, the lay people there who actually did the right thing and just being of, of help. Let me tell you one other story, which is a reflection of that. One of those groups in the church, the Knights of Malta, um, one of their members had a, a manor, a country manor, just a beautiful, beautiful country manor, which was turned into a hotel and it was a conference center, etc. I think it was on the Kosovo, um, I'm sorry, the Slovakian-Polish border. I'm not even sure which side of it it was on. But the family that owned this, they closed the conference center, maybe because of COVID there wasn't business, who knows, but they closed the conference center and turned it into a warehouse and distribution center. And every day, two vans came loaded up with goods went across the border to the Ukraine. So this family who were active in the Knights of Malta converted their house, their center into a distribution center. And every day, two vans went filled with medical supplies, food over into the areas where there wasn't any. So I think you're completely right that this is a genuine show of, of, of solidarity. You as obviously executive director of uh, Catholic Charities in the Archdiocese, um, what else are you guys doing to help people uh, or state side? Um, first of all, one of the reasons I went on the trip is because we're one of the few resettlement agencies in New York. So we have resettled people from many different countries already. We have resettled 70 Afghans who fled that war. And so I wanted to see a little bit firsthand, what are we going to experience if and when some of the Ukrainian refugees come here? Now, one of the things I think it's important for our listeners to be aware of is they don't want to come, not because they don't like the United States. They want to go back home. But it's the same as all of us. You don't want to have to move thousands of miles away. You want to go back to where you are. So I think some of the generosity I've heard, well, I'll open my house here in New York to somebody. Let's be a little bit, let's see what happens that's there. So I went because I wanted to know a little bit about that situation, what we might expect, okay? So I got a little bit of sense of that. What we're doing in New York already, because as part of this whole international crisis, what the United States does is if somebody comes from a war zone and is already here when the war breaks out, usually we say for 18 months, two years, okay, no matter what your visa says, will kind of give you status for two years, you can work, et cetera. So we already have helped at least one family with their fees to apply for that temporary protective status 
so that they can stay here while hopefully the war ends soon and hopefully peace is restored. So that's what we've been doing here. More broadly, you know, across New York State, our Catholic charities agencies, we touch almost every human need. We have homes for people, women who are pregnant. We have daycare and we have Head Start for kids before they are in, in school. We have after school programs for kids to help them to succeed in school. We have sports recreational activities so people have wholesome recreation. We do you know, emotional, mental health, counseling for people in the community and for some with more severe needs in residences, for those with disabilities, those with addictions. We service them in the communities and we also service them in residential um, buildings where they live, that's where they're living while they're dealing with their illnesses and, and diseases. Um, so those are the things we do. We, are, we obviously help people to stay in their homes and their apartment, preventing evictions, millions and millions of meals we provide throughout New York State. And we also you know, are helping with the building of some affordable housing in various places. So you know, one of the things we like to say is that our Catholic Charities Agencies, two things. One is we touch almost every human need and we provide a comprehensive range of services touching almost every human need. And the other thing is, which most people know, but some people don't, is that our services are available regardless of a person's religion. Non-Catholics, Catholics, they get the same meal. We don't have a Catholic meal yep. and a non-Catholic meal. Everybody gets served um, if there's a genuine need and we have the resources to do it. For people who want to help Ukrainian refugees, um, what would you suggest that they can do or where they can go to help? Well, they can obviously go directly to um, an organization like Catholic Relief Services or Catholic Near East Welfare Association, they can make contributions there. But anybody who wants to donate to Catholic charities in New York can make a donation and earmark their donations to help the Ukrainian refugee crisis. And, you know, some of that money might be used here. Some of it might be used in Poland, Slovakia, and some of it might be used in the Ukraine within the country because the crisis um, is broad. It's within the country, it's in the neighboring countries, and we have over a million Ukrainians in the United States. And so there's need to provide some help here to be ready to receive people or to help people here to resettle a little bit until the situation in the Ukraine stabilizes. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, do you have any closing remarks you want to, uh, our listeners to hear? I think this is a time when the devastation of this unjust, aggressive war by Russia against the Ukraine just simply needs to be saying, no, this is wrong, can't happen. And I think what I want to say is I've been very inspired by the solidarity of so many nations, individuals, people standing up and saying, yeah, we agree, no way. And we're going to show by providing the assistance, the aid to help those who have been impacted. I think what we have to pray is that we don't run out of that compassionate approach until there can be a stabilization to the situation. Thank you so much, Monsignor. Now, before you go, just one last thing. 
I know you host a show on weekends on Sirius XM, uh, the Cath- or channel yeah. 129, the Catholic channel, right. called Just Love. When can uh, people tune in if they want to listen? 10 a.m. Saturday morning. So as people throughout the state of the nation, if you're doing errands on a Saturday morning and you're going to the store to pick up things at the hardware store or Home Depot or groceries, tune in. 10 to 11, the Catholic Channel, Sirius XM 129. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Jillian. Thanks for listening to the Capital Compass podcast. And thank you so much to Monsignor Kevin Sullivan for coming on the show. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be coming out with a new episode every other week. If you'd like to support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch the latest from the conference, you can follow us on Instagram and Twitter at NYS Catholic Conf and on Facebook at NYS Catholic Conference. Thanks again and God bless.